Girls and guys, listen up. This is a topic for all. Around 50% of the adult population will experience the menstrual cycle. The other 50% will know, will work with, and potentially even coach those that do. And did you know that women can actually use their monthly cycle to their advantage when it comes to sport? So it's time to break the taboo around periods and have an open conversation as we look at how we can optimize sporting performance for women. Athletes are athletes. In order to improve performance, you need to train hard and recover well. And some days are different. You might feel really motivated on one day, the next day it's really hard to get out of the door. Or maybe you can just keep going all day, but you can't reach that top end speed. Men and women will experience fluctuations in their training, but for women, they're actually more predictable. And as a result, training can be prescribed to fit around this. In the past, periods have been seen as a hindrance to athletic performance, but it is time to flip that on its head and unlock the potential and use it to actually help with your planning. In order to do that, we need to look at what's going on at a hormonal level and the hormones effects on our body. And the menstrual cycle can be divided into four phases and it begins on day one of your period with the menstrual phase. This is also known as the early follicular phase and the hormones estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest. Due to the drop in progesterone, the inflammatory response ends and your white cell count will also drop, which increases the risk of picking up an illness. In brief, during this phase, you want to try and optimize your sleep and your nutrition. And that said, it has been proven that you are quite likely to experience increased cognitive function. And when it comes to training, try to include more strength training and high intensity. On to phase two, which is known as the late follicular phase. And here, progesterone remains low, but estrogen actually rises to reach its peak. Well, that increase in estrogen should help you to feel good and be really energized during this phase. And you also might notice you've got a decreased appetite and your blood sugars as a result will be more stable. When it comes to training, you can still focus on really getting some strength training in. And at this phase, your body is actually going to be able to optimize the repair of muscle tissue. Phase three, ovulation. Estrogen drops off initially here, but then rises again along with progesterone, and they both remain high during ovulation. It's obviously different from woman to woman, but there can be some pain and discomfort at this phase in the abdomen and the lower back area. Interestingly, the basal body temperature during this phase can actually increase by 0.3 of a degree, and as a result of the high levels of progesterone, some women might notice an increase in their resting heart rate and their breathing. Interestingly, during this phase, the basal body temperature can rise by 0.3 of a degree. And as a result of the high progesterone, some people might notice a slight increase in their natural breathing and resting heart rate. And some of us will experience cravings during this time as blood sugar levels are less stable. When it comes to training, you might just be feeling a little bit of lethargy, but there's nothing you really need to change. But do be aware that your body might take slightly longer to recover. The fourth and final phase of the monthly cycle, known as the luteal phase, sees estrogen and progesterone both drop to their lowest levels. This change in hormones can trigger an inflammatory response, which is partly the cause of typical PMS symptoms. Again, you might experience cravings for certain food due to changes in insulin levels and blood sugar fluctuations, but this does vary from women to women. Sleep might be affected, which could affect concentration and also your body's ability to recover, but exercise is still important to help you feel good during this phase, but you might want to make that of the lighter, more moderate variety. And your body also is better adapted at this phase to use fats over carbohydrates, which again will support doing more aerobic work. In the past, men and women have used the same training structures, but having seen the effect of the monthly cycle, you can see how important it is to actually adapt your training to that. Well, Dr. Stacey Sims is world renowned for helping women to actually optimize their unique physiology. And she's famous for saying, women are not small men. Well, I'm delighted to say that Stacey has actually given up some of her time to speak to me. 
Yeah, so I mean, the real important thing that defines the two phases is ovulation. So right before ovulation, you have a luteinizing hormone surge that coincides with the estrogen surge. And luteinizing hormone is really important to understand because without it, you can't really have ovulation. So when people start to get into menstrual dysfunction, we first start looking at the pulse, pulsing or the pulsatile aspect of LH and if you have a surge. Um, but for all intents and purposes, your major sex hormones are estrogen and progesterone. And they do phase, you know, estrogen and progesterone are low, then estrogen surges right before ovulation, dips a little, and then comes back up. And with ovulation and the release of the egg, that is um, how progesterone starts to come up. Because the job of progesterone is to break down a whole bunch of tissue to provide a lot of energy to build the endometrial lining. So when we look at it from a systemic effect, there are definitely major effects that both of these sex hormones have on all the other systems of the body. And so how can we, this is a big question, how can we adapt our training to fit around this, this fluctuation in our hormones? Yeah, one of the first things is because every woman is a little bit different and understanding how you feel across your menstrual cycle really can give you some insight to how you dial things in. Because some women feel bulletproof right around ovulation and then some have a delayed feeling of feeling bulletproof and they'll feel really flat for about 36 hours after ovulation. So if you're one of those women that feels like bulletproof right around day 14 or 15, then you can dial in your training to go really hard and get that hard training adaptation because your body's going to let you. If you feel really flat, don't fight it. Just delay that hard workout a couple of days until you feel that surge of energy again. And across the follicular phase and that low hormone phase, as estrogen starts to come up, you'll have really fantastic days as well because estrogen's anabolic, it's neurostimulatory. Um, so there's a lot of benefits of estrogen coming up in isolation without progesterone. And after ovulation, when estrogen and progesterone both start coming up, uh, some women are unaffected. They don't feel anything until about three or four days before their period starts. And that's when you have the most elevation of estrogen and progesterone and a huge inflammation response and a, an immune suppression. Um, so this is where you start to feel sick, bloated, tired, fatigued. And so if you know how you feel on those certain days, then you can dial in your hard workouts and your deloader recovery workouts. And any tips for doing, say, strength training in a phase when you're not anabolic or a, a phase when you've got a certain amount of training you want to be doing, but it doesn't suit that phase you're in? And is a, it, I mean, it kind of sounds like I think you're going to say, well, don't do it, but you are an athlete no. as well. So, so what was, what's your suggestion around that? Uh, I mean, if you're working with a team of athletes, you can't really dictate, okay, someone's in follicular phase, you go do this one rep max type stuff. And you're in the late luteal phase, so you go in the gym and you do something different. When you're working in a team environment, you can't really do that. But when you know where you are and your teammates are, or however that group is um, with regards to where they are in their menstrual cycle, you can say, okay, well, we're all going to do some power training today. And I know that you're in the later luteal phase where you're not in an anabolic state, you're starting to feel a little bit flat. So instead of um, really pushing that top end high intensity, we're going to work technique and not put a lot of load on. Um, but for those who are around ovulation or in the early follicular phase, we're going to work in that, that hard, heavy load. So you're getting the same benefits um, with regards to the session in the gym. It's just the technique a lot of people forget. Or they say, oh, I'm a few days before my period and my cognition is, is a bit low, my reaction time is slow, so it's not efficacious for me to do technique. That's the time you want to do it, especially if you're a triathlete, because you're trying to work, work on economy of motion. So if you're working on your skill development, your economy of motion, when your body's in a perceived tired state because of the way the hormones are affecting the central nervous system and um, some of your neurotransmitters, then you can make a lot of gains, especially for like running off the bike and you're trying to run tired. So if you're working on technique um, and you're working on bar technique under loads and then going and doing some running drills, then all of it feeds forward to how you perform running off the bike.
Um, I mean, you work with women all the time and, and getting them to optimize you know, their strength and their, their training ability. Have you got any other general advice that you think our viewers at GTN could learn from your huge knowledge in this area? I think the biggest thing is there's so many women that are unaware of, of where they are in their cycle when they're doing things. They don't track, they don't know how they feel. And so that's the first thing I always tell women to do. It's like track your cycle. Don't listen to someone else about what to do. Find out how you respond to different things, how you sleep in the days leading up to your period, how you feel around ovulation. Track your own cycle for at least three months to get some really good data of training, how you feel in training, how your sleep is um, against your, your menstrual cycle. So that gives you really objective data. And then you can start making some informed decisions from there. Even coaches in that same regard, if they have their athletes tracking and getting this objective data, then they too can help facilitate better training practices, especially if you're a triathlete and have individual sessions of how to maximize the training load around the days where you feel great and kind of deload or have a little bit more recovery on the days that you don't feel so great. This development in research really could be a game changer in women's athletic performance. Now knowing more about the menstrual cycle, it seems crazy not to optimize this and take into account when we're planning our training. And maybe you're already ahead of the game and you're using this in your own training and you're planning out according to your monthly cycle. Or maybe you're someone who coaches athletes that experience a monthly cycle. I'd love to know how you're going about that and what differences you've experienced. So please let us know in the comments section below. And this is obviously a bit of a different topic that we've delved into here at GTM, but hopefully you've enjoyed it please give us a like and remember you can also follow us on social media and subscribe here on youtube